the impossible lick in Rise, that really fast thing. There's a part in Peacemaker Die mm. and Midnight Express and Little Jack Horney. Yeah. I knew Peacemaker Die from Three Sides to Every Story. Yeah. Um, so it, it, this is a technique, this thing that it, it's not, you haven't used it a million times, but it's a part of your playing. It's a signature part of your playing. And it's, it's pretty fucking unbelievable so i don't know if there's anything you could say about it yeah i mean i think i think you know it's it's hard to always notice through the years what you do what you don't do like i said but i think when rise came out and people were posting about it this one fan guitar player fan said guys what and and he's teaching us right he said guys i don't know if you've noticed or not but what nuno has two things that he does that nobody else does and i was like wow really tell me more like he needs to and he used an example. If Eddie's signature is tapping, the Nuno signature is this pulsating, muted, you know, sort of thing that he does. It's very percussive, almost like a fucking drummer plays that he does on Peacemaker Die brought up. And I was like, oh my God, he's he's right. That's why when people are saying, dude, you've raised the bar, like, you know, and everybody's like, you know, even Beato's like, you the bar has been raised in the soul. And I'm like, I think I did this in 93 and 94. <laughs> you know, and he said the other thing was like, and he and you know when he first came out, even when he did pull off taps, and somebody said this to me a long time ago, he did something nobody was doing at the time, which is on the get the funk out solo, which why Brian May and everybody went like, whoa. And even Edward brought this up to me. And he says, I was string skipping doing tapping. Edward was always kind of on a string and doing something, or he'd go down like a pentatonic scale, do something. All of a sudden he goes, Nuno, why are you you're doing like arpeggios, but you're skipping strings, even pentatonically and doing things. I always love that exercise of like, why do I gotta go in order and play like a scale? Why can't I flip around and do things up and down? So I started really implementing it in my playing in the in the blues pentatonic world. I started implementing it on tapping. So those were the two little contributions that he said. So he was trying to say it to the people that were doing it. He goes, guys, he's been doing this for a while, but it's great that it's getting recognized now. But it's something that I never really clocked. Like little yeah. box of like, hey, I'm doing this, look at me. But Midnight Express, the same thing. Midnight Express on an acoustic is really muted. And I, I was, uh, we do this thing called once every, used to do it once every month, once every six months called Metal Nights at the Rainbow. It's 20 minutes from my house. And all it was was Mar- Morello started a long time ago, many, many years ago. And he would call people who love music and love metal and rock and roll. And it'd be six of us sometimes at 11 o'clock at night. Remember yesterday it was 23 of us because it's been the first oh, wow. <laughs> and All we do is do, all right, everybody, and it's difficult things. We go, what's the Mount Rushmore of your guitar players? Mount Rushmore of worst guitar solos of all time. Like crazy shit that we could never podcast because it's brutal. <laughs> but the funny thing is it's fun. We have some food and we go on. But there was a player there last night said, listen, I just want you to know I'm kind of embarrassed in telling you this. I said to myself, before I fucking die, I want to be able to play Midnight Express because it's quirky and it's not easy because of the way you do it. It's not like it's fast, but people play fast. But the way you mute and the phrasing that you do it in, I've been doing a little bit every fucking week I'm trying to do it just to be able to play that part. And I was telling him, if I fucking showed you, you'd be like, oh, is that it? You know, meaning it's something that I do. And he said right. he wanted to learn it because I don't hear other people doing that. Sure. Right. So it, it kind of goes with the question that you're saying. And it's really hard to talk about myself like that. I, other people are teaching me what, because I'm, 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 I'm very humbled and I'm very like, I know what I can do and I know what I can't do. But I also treat it like it's guitar playing. I'm not curing cancer, right? It's just fun stuff, you know? And, and, and I never like to say, oh, I came up with something or I invented something or do whatever. Because right. even, even Edward didn't come up with tapping. He wasn't the first one. He just yeah. made it his and made it like, you know, he took it from a Steve Hackett or whoever did it first back in the day and doing the back in fucking one of the early Genesis albums or whatever he got or even classical. They kind of did something like it with a pick. That's right. Yeah. He said, Fuck this shit. I'm going to make this shit my own and flip this on its head. And he, he owns it now, period. Well, listen, you know, Hendrix didn't tell Fender to put a tremolo arm on a Stratocaster, but, you know, he might as well have. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> apparently you did something called the play with me challenge yes. um so tell me just a little bit about that if in fact it came from a song from stranger things and you yeah know. the play with the play with me challenge or even watching you know people play your stuff play with me challenge is a song called play with me on the first album it was if anybody 
fans know, but when Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure came out, the first one with, you know, George Carlin in it and everything else, which was one of my heroes, George Carlin, but he, 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 he we, the end scene when Mozart and all the people he brought back in the time machine are running around the mall. That's my guitar solo from play with me as a soundtrack in the back that they took and they looped it and they move it and they do stuff with. Uh, so that was, it was also in guitar hero, that solo that you had to like get to the end of guitar hero back in the day. And you <laughs> to finish the whole thing. You had to be able to play that solo with the five color buttons. So it's always been a challenging solo for people because it's fun and it's got that, some of that muted stuff and some of that craziness. Uh, yes, watching people play it and people trying to do it or doing it in their own way is super, it's hard to believe that somebody's, act, it's always been hard to believe that somebody's trying to play my shit be, the way I try to play other people's stuff. I've never, right. been, I've, I've never had the ego, I guess, to go like, yeah, of course they are, I'm the shit, you know, they're playing my shit. I always thought like, really? Like, wow, that's so exciting. There's a kid in his bedroom, like I was in my bedroom learning page. Wow, how amazing is it that somebody's playing your music? It's super fucking honor. It's such an honor and it's amazing. And it never mattered to me whether they're playing it right or wrong or, or they're close or whatever it is. Even though I have thought about it like, oh, he fucking nailed it. How about sometimes like, like you said, what the fuck? He played it down here? That was fucking cool. Like I should have played it down there. That was even better. Yeah. What the fuck? So yeah, I get a kick out of it. I love it. And and when I had to, everybody, I would have chosen everybody that entered that challenge to say, just thank you for challenging. You win. You all win. <laughs> but there was one kid, you try to go with the emotional side of things. There's a kid that added a bit of his own fire to it and added a bit of his own thing. And it touched me. Yeah. Wait, he might have not got it right. He might have done it 80%, but he made it his. And I think that's what it's all about. At the end yeah. Of the yeah. Thank you for the time. What a pleasure to talk to you longer than i talk to you at nam yeah of course yeah. hey what's up <laughs> <laughs> you remember i bought you a coke you remember exactly <laughs> that's funny